Hi everyone, I'm Ellie. Um, I think you've just heard all of that about me, uh, but I am a first year PhD student at Durham University, and in my spare time I get to drive one of, um, one of the UK's two <laughs> solar-powered cars, which is very exciting. So, this is us. We are GOM, which is Durham University Electric Motorsport. We'll, um, we are a team of 50 students, on a good day, who um, design, build and race solar-powered cars. Uh, we're one of two UK teams, the other being Cambridge. But firstly, um, rather than me telling you all about what we do, I thought I'd show you. So here's a quick video of us in Australia in 2017. Oh, okay, that's gonna work. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, sunshiny day. rubbish cut at the end but it does go on a while. Uh, I should mention that uh, we're all students so we spend most of the time doing our degrees and this is all sort of a hobby, we do it in our spare time. Right now you've seen all about us, I'll tell you a bit about our history. So we are uh, the UK's longest running solar car team, we were founded in 2002. This was our first concept car built in 2004. It's got three wheels, it has got a quite heavy steel chassis and it's built the body as fiberglass with wood. This formed the basis for our first competition car which we took to America in 2008 to race in the American Solar Challenge which is a 2,500 mile epic trip from Dallas to Calgary or at least it was that year and uh, we ended up winning best rookie team in that competition which then propelled us to the real world stage um, in 2011 where we entered the World Solar Challenge. This is the same chassis but with an all new um, aerodynamic package and also an internal reworking. Our success in 2011 uh, meant that we were able to go back in 2015 and that's where I come in, I'm in the green shorts. Um, we, in, the, in the meantime, in the intervening years, we built a brand new car. Now it's got four wheels, it's a, a carbon fibre monocoque and weighs only 250 kilos. And we then modified this car again to bring us to the present. This is the vehicle we took to uh, the World Solar Challenge in 2017. It uses the 2015 chassis, but uh, we did a complete mechanical and electrical overhaul, and we had to modify it for some pretty um, dramatic rules changes. You might notice that there is now, oh, is there a, a uh, laser thing. Uh, you might notice that now there's a big white bonnet because they dramatically reduced the solar array area we were allowed. So, after all that, you might still be wondering what a solar car is. So, um, this, this is the inside of ours. We've got a single driver and we've got a, um, a stiff carbon fibre chassis. This whole thing weighs 250 kilos, which is about the same as 
one-sixth of a normal road car or a third of an F1 car. Um, we've got 391, 22.8% efficient silicon solar cells, and, um, which you can see there. And these are then the energy collected with these powers this battery. So we have 20 kilograms of lithium ion batteries, which are the same type that you have in your phone. Um, and the energy stored in these batteries will power the car at sort of highway speeds for about three to four hours. So we're not going to just stop if we hit a cloud. Uh, and the, these batteries power our um, brushless DC in-hub motor. So this is a Durham design, which we're very proud of. And so this is actually inside the rear wheel of the solar car behind the driver. And it's something like 98% efficient. The most important thing when you're building a solar car is um, having really, really good aerodynamics, especially when um, we're really generating one horsepower. Um, so the idea is we, we spend a long time doing CFD, computational <laughs> fluid dynamics, and we tested this model in Durham's wind tunnel. We have a two-meter wind tunnel at the university that we were able to use to refine our design. Oh, yeah, and it is not bolted down, so don't run the tunnel when it's like that. Um, so the event itself uh, is the Bridgestone World Ch Solar Challenge, and it's a biennial event to which, which takes place in Australia. So uh, it is the premier solar car event and uh, the largest event of its kind on Earth. Uh, we compete against 40 other teams, including Cambridge, from every continent apart from Antarctica, I think. Uh, so this is, this is the pit lane in Darwin, where all the teams congregate. Yeah. Uh, it's still a bit like in Darwin. Okay. Um, and uh, the aim of the event is simple. You have to be the fastest team to uh, race your solar car 3,000 kilometres from the top of Australia to the bottom of Australia. And uh, you have to do this using only solar power. Uh, to give you a bit of perspective, that's about the same as driving from Norway to Greece. And there's pretty much nothing in between. It's really, really spe spectacular. Uh, as I said, it was, um, the, the challenge was simple. It's actually a bit more difficult than that. There are some quite strict regulations that we have to follow, which are published the year before to give you time to build a car which will, um, which will comply with them. And the idea is partly to stop you from building a complete death trap, but also um, it's to really push for innovation. So when we first started racing solar cars, you were allowed nine square meters of solar panels. Now you're only allowed four. And there have also been dramatic changes to the, uh, the weight of the batteries you're allowed. So that first purple car I showed you, that had 125 kilos of lead acid batteries. This entire car weighs 250. So uh, with only 20 kilos of batteries. So the really, the, the rules try and force you to design cars that look more like solar cars than, um, or more like conventional road vehicles and less like these strange space age concept cars. Uh, so, as well as that, that we, um, the teams go through an intensive three-day dynamic and static scrutineering process uh, where we get checked out by the Australian Highway Authorities, and that cu culminates in a hot lap, and uh, all of the teams are ranked based on how quickly they did their hot lap, and that determines your starting order when you set off from Darwin. The atmosphere in the pit lanes in Darwin is absolutely amazing. Uh, so you spend about two weeks there before the race actually starts, and uh, doing that, you're, you spend your days fixing, fixing any last-minute niggles with your car, uh, adding some extra features that you might have not had time to add before, and in our case, actually hot weather testing. Most of our mechanical issues and tend to come from uh, us not having raced a car in 40-degree heat before, like our glue coming unstuck. Um, but the most fun... Uh, bit really is going to meet all the engineers from all over the world. And so uh, this is us talking to a team from um, Australian National University, I think. And you get to snoop at their cars and chat about just building solar cars in general. And it's a really, really good time. Uh, the atmosphere in the pits is electric um, and incredibly busy. But the second that you're on the road, you're pretty much on your own. We drive under the number plate Sun 20, so we are actually a legal road vehicle in Australia, but we have to be uh, flanked by a convoy. 
So uh, we have a lead vehicle and a chase vehicle up here. Um, the lead vehicle is our technological command center, really. Um, that's where we have all of the onboard telemetry and also tools to fix your car in the middle of the outback because we can be up to a day's drive from the nearest garage. Everything, we, everything that breaks, we have to try and fix by the side of the road. We also have the chase vehicle directly behind the solar car. And uh, in that, we have to um, look after an official team observer who's there to make sure that we don't cause any, or we don't break any of the rules of the challenge or try and modify our car in any way. Um, so yeah, that's our, our convoy. Uh, fun fact is actually that it is illegal for the solar car to not be with the convoy. So if uh, the lead vehicle drives through a red light, the solar car is obliged to follow. <laughs> Uh, driving hours in the outback are uh, from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. And it is very strict. You camp where you stop. The observer will draw a chalk line across the road where you got to. And then the next morning you start from where the chalk line is. And that does mean that we end up camping in the middle of nowhere. You might have seen a bit in the video that we were just setting up our tents in the dirt. And that is amazing fun. But we also have to set up a little bit of a... a tool stuff or like, so that we can work on our car during the night. Uh, the very first thing we do when we get to camp is that we have to set up our car to charge. So when we do this event, it's sort of early spring in Australia and the, the sun tends to set pretty quickly after, after five. But um, we try and maximize our charging by, um, we can tilt our array all the way up to, um, so we've got the best angle to um, to get the most direct instant sunlight. So we do that, we set up the car immediately, and then we also have, our, we, we also have to do um, some tire changes or fix anything that might have gone wrong during the day. Um, the observer will impound our batteries after dark to make sure that we can't charge them off the mains or try and do anything else. So we've annoyed many of an, an observer by staying up late into the night um, trying to fix our car when all they want to do is go to bed, but they can't just in case we do anything that we shouldn't be. So now you've seen all about the event, um, what's next for us? Uh, it's a very exciting time for GM at the moment because we're right in the build cycle of our 2019 car. It's the first time we've built a new car in four years and this is the first time as well that we've tried to build one all in one cycle. Normally it takes us two race cycles to actually uh, design and manufacture the car. I've been warned on pain of death that I'm not allowed to show you anything about it, but I've snuck in a screenshot of the front suspension. It's not very exciting, but this is what we're all doing in Durham. And this is a photo taken a couple of weeks ago of us manufacturing the moulds. So from this, we'll make a mould that we can lay up the carbon fibre to create our new car. And all going well, that'll hopefully be next weekend. Uh, oh, that looked much better before, but anyway. Um, the exciting things about our 2019 car is that it's going to be 80 kilograms lighter than before. There's going to be 25% less aero drag. And if I tell you that the current car has got the same, um, the same drag, experiences the same drag force as an A4 piece of paper, this one's going to be 25% less than that. Um, it's smaller in every dimension, and it's more purple, because we've all of our previous cars have been white, and we feel like it ought to be purple again. Um, the most common question, other than is it a boat, that I get asked is, um, will we all be driving around in solar cars in 10 years' time? And the answer is no, probably not. These are concept vehicles, and also, even if um, even if we, uh, like, with the increasing uh, technology, the uh, improved photovoltaics, we're still not going to be able to get more than one or two horsepower from this car. So, uh, what, what are we going to be doing instead? Um, you might agree that uh, if you were to sit and try and design the most efficient electric vehicle that you could, it would look sort of torpedo shaped. Oh, that's gone. Uh, a bit like this shelled eco marathon car. Uh, but that's not what people want. Most people would rather have a, a car with seven seats or five seats that they can actually put their shopping in. Uh, so the reason why building solar cars is so great is because we have to allow for the solar array area. It forces you to design the most, uh, 
the most efficient car that you can, which uses the body plan of a usual car. So uh, all of the improvements will be in our making our ultra-efficient electric drivetrain, um, ultra-light composites. The research could be in the batteries so that we have a better range in the future, because that is the current sticking point with um, electric vehicles, is you can only drive them 60 miles or so without charging. I think we will see solar-powered um, cars, but that solar power is going to come from the grid, and you're going to charge your electric car off um, solar power collected elsewhere. I don't think that these things, fun as they are, are going to be the future. But the other great thing about the WSC is it gets together young engineers from all over the world. I've made so many friends in the World Solar Challenge, and many of them are going to end up being working in, in companies and working on the future. And this is the future because in 20, after 2040, um, the UK government of said that we're not going to be able to have combustion vehicles. So it, we are at the beginning of the electric revolution, and it is incredibly important that we start thinking about how we're going to solve problems like having increased range. Uh, and the other reason I do it is just because it's great fun. And here are, there's a choice selection of pictures of us having fun in the outback. And um, yes, thanks to all of our sponsors, because racing solar cars is not cheap. And we couldn't do it without going out and raising money and uh, support from the engineering department at Durham and from all of these external companies. And yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>